morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, men and women. And welcome to Tony Commander, J.R. Kabukwa Chesson Talk Show. Today is September the 19th, Saturday. Have a good Saturday, wherever you are. Let's get on my show. <clears throat> As you can see, I have three topics lined up here. They are basically the three topics we're going to be dealing with today. And first, we're going to be dealing with the alarming number of rape cases in Liberia. This is unbelievable. So let's talk about it. Why do we have these numbers of alarming rape cases in Liberia? Where our babies, our teenagers, boys and girls, none are safe from the men of Liberia today. Why? <clears throat> Yesterday I started listen, listening to Grace Goa show as she was talking about the case, the rape cases in Liberia and how she keep hearing about these cases every day. They keep coming up, people keep calling her from Liberia about these different cases. How people sodomizing and raping young children both sides, back and front. <clears throat> and this is, well, for some people who don't know our country, this may be alarming for you all. But for Liberians who know our history and and traditional culture and the links to it, it's no surprise because I've been telling you all this from time immemorial. <clears throat> Every time people be talking and our indigenous people, these so-called educated traditional people come up and start accusing you, oh, y'all were, y'all Congo people, y'all were following our school girls and, and raping our young children and things like that. I always pointed to the fact that all this raping and under gay age sex with under age children and all of that started from our traditional society, from our poor society. Our young girls go in the poor society when they're seven years old or eight years old. By the time they come out, they're 10 to 11 or 12 years old the most. They're ready for marriage. They are ready for marriage. And secondly, women under the cultural, traditional practice have no rights. They are not human beings. They are chattel. Go and learn about your traditional history. That's why in the culture, the women do not walk in front of the men. The women belong to the men. The men own the women. <clears throat> so when you come out from your traditional uh, trap or poor society training, and you come out and you are paraded to the city, half dressed, with your, with your titties hanging out, all the men are standing there picking their wives. <clears throat> and the most, most of the people that are privileged to marry these girls, are men who have wealth and according to our tribal traditional practice wealth is cattle chattel property animals anything you own and the more you own it the more your wealth is determined by what you own <clears throat> and in our tr traditional society in the past it was not judged based on money. It was judged based on physical goods and chattel you had. How much cows, how many goats, how many sheep, how many, all these things you had determine your wealth. Your farm, your children, all of that determine your wealth. Because in, in our traditional practice, women, are there to have children and take care of the farm. That the traditional duty. Take care of their husband. Their job is to serve their husband. They are the wives, the chattel of their husband. They part of the husband's property. They take care of him. 
and bear his children. And women children will look upon as wealth. Because why? They got to marry. Whoever coming to marry them got to pay a diary. And that's how they marry the people children. Before you can marry, you got to have wealth. Your family got to come to the people family and show and, and display your wealth. And just how much you gave the man for his daughter, that's how much his family is wealth. So you gave to the family according to the physical wealth, a semblance of wealth. So all these things stem from our tradition. People from our country who are not exposed to our Western ways have no respect for women. Yes, you would say I'm my wife and all of that, but what they say how to how to talk to the women, how to behave to the women. The women are property, so there is no love per se. It's all for tradition. See, and that's why the rape is so prevalent in our city. That's why the rape is so prevalent. Every day you hear people getting raped. And you're talking about how the people come to cover it up. Oh, that our man, that, that is the same system I told you about. The system of the peace sick. Oh, that our time, forget about it. When your time comes, we'll forget about it. We can't go on to that. And this is the, how our system has been persisting from time immemorial. There's not the first, these are not the first cases of rape. <laughs> Excuse me. These are not the first cases of rape. But they're more prevalent now because everybody in Monrovia, everybody got access to telephones, everybody got access to news media. So it's more prevalent now. But these things have persisted up country for years. Even in Monrovia for years. But families cover it up. Everybody coming for peace sake, for peace sake. So you're seeing the real Liberian society now, how we function. And how the families cover up everything. Cover up everything. Cover up everything. I don't know, I'm sure that's not a miracle Liberian way. It gotta be the traditional way. Because this thing has persisted in our society from time immemorial. It has persisted. And it was taken from the tribal setting into our governmental setting, where our leaders were running behind all the young school girls. Still to the day. And all our leaders gotta have so many women, women, women. You see George Weah and the women fighting on, on the TV that the fight style? That's not the first time. It's not only in Liberia. It happened in America. It happened everywhere. It happened everywhere. But it's just so prevalent in Liberia because these people have no respect for women. You know? The man got his wife there and he's sleeping with all these other women right on her. They're slapping her. They're doing everything to her. You know? <clears throat> and so the woman is a Jamaican. She's not Liberia. Just how y'all talking about her spending our money and doing everything and don't know our culture. That just how she don't understand the culture of her husband. And that what she wanted to leave him for so many times. Because to be so blatant, to be so all right with all your infidelity. That's unbelievable. And you have the women fussing all on the telephone, all on the internet for you. <clears throat> and now the Nigerian guys, all of them got your joke. They, they want your, they want you to share some of the girls with them, you know. <clears throat> but these are the things that happen in our society because we're permitted. Because we're permitted. Everybody got girlfriend problem, family problem, and love problem. Everybody has them. Everybody. 
It's how you handle it. It's how you behave yourself. Now, George, we can't just go around sleeping with everybody in our nation. Now, I heard Prophet Key accusing him of sleeping with the Minister of Defense wife and all these things. And these are the things that perpetrate rape in our country. Now, you're putting this guy, come here. <clears throat> Maxwell, come here, making him finance minister. All these women coming or accusing him of sexual harassment, of rape, and all the kind of things. You know, his the functional household where he's sleeping with his sister and with his wife's sister in the same house having children by her and the wife there, all of them living in the same house together. Those are not practices that Liberian people are used to. And these are the practices that promote all these dysfunctional sexual perversions. Per 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 the word can't even come to me. You know, but they are perverted behaviors. They bring it in our country. We're not used to this kind of thing, but it is style under this man. Everything go back to Ellen Johnson Sally. She started it. Her son started selling our position in government to have sex with men. These are the things that go on in our country. Our baby children not safe no more. The baby two years or three years old not safe in our country no more. What 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 kind of system is this? Where are we going with this kind of thing? How did Liberia become so debased and immoral and wicked and nasty and dirty? Why did why did we come so bad? You know, I heard uh, 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 Grace go out talking about how Ellen Johnson put things in place and she left. It doesn't matter, Grace. If you put things in place and you do train the people and educate the people to keep the standard going and teach them discipline, it will never work. You cannot keep changing corrupt people and putting different people there throughout your administration and depending on the foreign and uh, 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 international community without disciplining our people. People steal the money instead of you disciplining them, you let them go, you you, you, you forgive them, you, you, you say people can't beg for them, you let them off the hook. How the people will change to be responsible to run the things that the government provide for them? <clears throat> It can't happen. And these are the things I keep telling you about. No matter how we provide for our country and people, if we don't give our people the discipline, the training, and the understanding that these things they have, they're not gifts. They are the hard earned working and struggle of the Liberian people. And if you responsible to handle these things you better be mature responsible and disciplined enough to know that you have a mission to accomplish and you better accomplish that mission but any chosen selling never train our people she just put all of them there let them have their own way steal our money to forgive them paying them huge sum of money to come and work in our government not doing anything but getting big paid. She set the standard and the pattern for all the corruption in our country today. Look at all the just new stuff people getting fifteen thousand dollars, big cars, and living like days. How do people will care for anybody in our country? Is the responsibility of our leaders to set standards for our people. Leadership is not only coming up and leading and making decisions and passing laws and all of that. No, it's ensuring that our people perform effectively on their jobs. That they do their jobs and understand that they're getting paid for their jobs. And it's nothing to take for granted. All our government properties need to be accounted for. 
All our drivers need to do reports on their vehicles. Government can't be buying vehicles and people destroying it and there's no accountability for it. Charity begins at home. I keep telling you all this thing. And if our children lives are in danger, their security is threatened. There's a problem with our leadership. There's a problem with our system of governance. And there is a serious problem. We gotta put a check and balance to our cultural tradition, to our culture, and bring it into power with our civilized society. Because it's, if we can allow our cultural practices to persist, and allow our people to continue with the traditional education of their children, it has to be coincided with our Western education. There will be no poor society no more with all Western education. No, they gotta go hand in hand. The days when our country were ruled indirectly by the chiefs ruling for speaking for the people is long gone. This is a new era of Liberianism. And everything we do has to work under the consistencies of our laws, our statutes, and everything. When I say laws, I mean our constitution and our statutes and everything so that we have consistency in our country. So our laws are not so indifferent to each other that it will cause confusion in our civilized society. Because we can't have people coming up all the time and begging for rapists. Coming up, oh, that our brother, man, that our traditional brother, no, no, no. No more that in our country. And you all know it's not good. Grace, you're talking about it. Everybody talking about it. I, I heard from Fana today, every heard from Fana in the Netherlands, talking about forming his own book of Haram group because of the injustices in our country, because of the unfairness. I heard Pafiki that talk about the military coming to take over the country again. So it, it's, it's evident that our country needs discipline. Our people need discipline. Because no matter what kind of development we bring into our country, if our people don't understand that they have duties and responsibilities to our country before themselves, and if they want to serve in our government, they must understand that our government is for the people of the Republic of Liberia. Not for any one person, not for any family, not for a group of crooks or anything to come and persistently think that they have rights over the rights, <clears throat> over the properties, resources of the people of Liberia. So once we learn to get our whole system correct, starting from the bottom, from scratch, we set up our system because our country is gone astray. Our country going to mark, run to mark. You know, we have no strong system of governance. We have no strong system of leadership. We have no strong system of education. We have no system of socialization to raise our children in the right manner that they know and understand early ages, their civics. the meaning of patriotism to their country and duties to their people. These are the things we have to teach our children. And we can't continue, we can't continue, we cannot continue to fail. And we have failed for too long. Now we gotta handle this alarming rape situation in Liberia. We gotta bring it under control. Our law enforcement and the government gotta set stringent uh, 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 measures and standards and deterrence to sway people away from rape and all this kind of thing. We're coming into a modern society now. All the things from the, all our ills from the war. You see, when we got a tradition, then we got a war in there again, coming and, and corrupting our youth. That was the word I wanted to use yesterday. When I was talking, I told you I missed a word. If you listen to my tip from yesterday, corruption of the minor. 
That's a legal term against people who destroy our youth by exposing them to immoral and un unconducive conditions for their ages, for their mentalities, and for their lives. You know, you can't corrupt minors. You can't cause minors to do things that are illegal and put in place for their own protection. Make them good and valuable citizens of our country. So we gotta protect our youth and our children. We have constitutional duties to do that. And we gotta start for our traditional society. We gotta start setting the laws down for our men so they know that our women are no longer chattel. They don't own our women. They are partners of our women. So we have to decide. That's why we have to have an intelligent government. A government that understands that the laws we put down have to be fundamental, lasting. So people don't come and change it based on tribal stupidness. So when we put our laws down, the tribal sector as well as the civilized sector agrees on everything we do and it becomes the law of the land. And anybody in any sector of our country violates the law, they go to jail, they're going to be punished. And once we set these standards and bring our tribal society up to par with our Western society and our modern society, things will change. Because our tribal society cannot remain tribal forever. Just as our morning society growing, our tribal society grows hand in hand with it. So some of the rules from the past that are not conducive to our morning world today has to and must change. Or have to and must change. They are not consistent with the, trans with the aggression and transgression and progression of society today. These traditional laws cannot remain stagnant. Our traditional leaders cannot remain stagnant and, 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 and stagnant in the growth, in the development, in the thinking. You cannot remain stagnant and immobile. That will change. Everything changes. Everything must change. Change. That's the way of nature. That's the way of life. So our tribal society that used to do those things in the past, and still talking about, oh, we're, we're, this is us, this is us. We know it doesn't work no more. These tribal divisions do not benefit our country. They benefit the criminals and rogues that want to play our tribal tendencies to divide us to bring in immoral practices and, and guilt and evil in our country. They have done this since 1980, 40 years now. We're beginning to open our eyes slowly. People beginning to talk about this ill. We see more people bringing our real history into focus, you know. Uh, we are not enemies. We are not enemies, but it's the perception of a few of our brothers and sisters who have used our racial and cultural, not even racial, because we're all the same, but our cultural differences and divide to maintain the state status quo righteousness, lack of progress and advancement, stagnation of our nation and people, or because see, read can't continue on this path. Our children deserve better. Our children deserve better. The time of the Liberian people is now. The time for us to rise up and take control of our country and our destiny is now. All this the war is over. The war is over. All this tribalism, all this negativism must cease and desist. All these warlords ruling our country, all these child soldiers and 
criminals that persist on leading our country in immoral in immorality and death and destruction. We must leave our country, leave our government, punish under the law for the actions against the Liberian people. The time of the Liberian people is now. So that's my take on this web thing. We need to take control of our country and destiny. George Weir, they don't know what they're doing. They're still on this tribal thing. And this thing from the war, where they think they can just rape our people with me with impunity and, and have lewd sex with them against their will. And the baby children, oh man, you're involved in the baby children in this thing. Ripping them like big women and things like that. I think on the pain though the children going through, man. When every time I think on rip on the children and how they destroy the little children, I think on the pain those children going through and hurt and suffering. And I want to catch these people and really discipline them. Because it's, it's unwarranted. It's unnecessary. And as a cease and desist. By any means necessary. It got a cease and desist. We gotta stop these people. See? <clears throat> Castration and all those things should be for only the 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 the, 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 the repeaters. Repeat offenders. Do that one time, we give you a break. You do that two times, we give you a break. Third time, you get to get straight in. Because, you see, with, take being, take uh, castrating somebody during the first sexual offense, to me, it's just, it's just as bad as rape. So our, the law, the punishment got to fit the crime. So at least people got to be given a chance. Things happen in our society because, like I said, the war, the culture, the tradition, all these things add to the dysfunctional behaviors of our citizens. So before we punish them, we got to let them know, and give them a shot, give them the opportunity to rehabilitate. We got to offer them the opportunity to be rehabilitated because Unlike the Western nations, we are so backwards. We, we do not provide the needs of our people. What our people need, what our people really need to help them grow, to help them advance, to help them think soundly and consciously of life and themselves. We have to provide these things to our people. We got to teach them. And we don't teach them we feel too. That's why we come to America for. So when we go back home, we know what can fit in our society and what cannot fit in our society. And we know the difference between the two. That's the prayer of serenity as well. Because if we keep making mistakes and putting things in our country that our people cannot understand nor appreciate, we waste our resources and come back to hurting our people with the same thing. Of, it's just as bad as stealing the money, you know, misapplication of the funds. We can't continue to do those things. So we gotta be conscious and know the needs of our people, discuss our people's needs, and come to the full realization of what we can implement in our country for our people. That comes to my second point. The coalition of political parties, the ANC, the APL, the Unity Party, and well, our party they got there with, with, with Darren Taylor, the Liberty Party, and all of them. All these parties can't work together. They can't. I told you from the beginning. The mere fact None of these parties have foundation. ELP, led by Ben and I, Charles Taylor Group, 
dysfunctional group of criminals. Unity Party, Ellen Johnson too, with Joe Borka. Joe Borka be in power forever. What you bring to our country? You can't bring no enlightenment. He been on the same process forever, forever, forever. He part of the system that has destroyed our country. What you will bring to our country? He can't bring that into our country. ANC, Liberty Party, Brumskin gone. I heard that one pastor talking about he Brumskin so be the man. How Brumskin would be the man when Brumskin father Charles Taylor to kill our people, blood on his hand. He can't be president of our country. We need new blood. All these people involved with our war and involved with killing Liberian people and bringing harm to our country cannot lead our country in the new Liberian era. We need new blood. And I told you, L.A. Cummings cannot lead Liberia. L.A. Cummings sat there on the Ellen Johnson Salif and tolerated her corruption and nepotism and didn't say a word. He just as bad as Joe Brubaka, Ben and I, Yuri, all of them in there. See, all of them. So is AC, ANC go and join our party? Where are they born with the LA Cummings and the American followers think they can do the Ben and I, Yuri then? And they have proved it to y'all. Yeah, LA, LA Cummings can run the party, but when it comes to making decisions, you got three against one. And that what they did to y'all, they cut Ella coming leg from under him and went on stage, did, did what they wanted to do, pass the paper out and, and left the ANC out. Now the ANC is all pissed off and they won't get back at them. How you join people that Ben and I, you and all of that, when you know Ben and I, you were, was one of the main corrupt men in Iberia. You know all Ben and I, you were wealth is from Charles Taylor. How you join Joe Borka when you know Joe Borka is with Ellie Johnson selling? Joe Borka, Kim, he been our government for so long, Ellie Johnson don't respect him. All the things the woman did to uh, Joe Borka, they stay calling the woman back to come in the party and lead them. These people are useless. Then you come and join them again and think you can change them and what you can do. I told you. You just as bad as the people ever coming. So you you young people can be confused. Duke, Estrada, JJ. You don't need to be with these people. You know, you just frustrate yourself. I watched your show. I saw how frustrated you are you were and, and you were pissed off. You talking about honesty. How you John Ben and I you ready and be honest and talk about honesty. The people rip our country off all these years. They made a foreign party to be president of Liberia again. After he and Charles Taylor finished ripping our country off. But like you were party ain't going nowhere. And if you follow that kind of party, you're going down the, the trench too. And you deserve, your ANC, you deserve what you got. You deserve to be stabbed in the back. You all know all these people rob our country. Especially better than you. You know the wealth the man got, he never deserved it. Then you go align yourself with that man, talking about you want to strengthen yourself to, to fight George Weir. How can criminals fight criminals? You're the same people. So you coming now to the realization that in that group, you know Liberian politics. In that group, you're a small boy. Hmm? Ben and I, you're my cousin. I'm not following that man because I know he's not capable to lead our country. Yeah, he can be a good guy and all of that. But what he did with Charles Taylor to come back and lead our country, he's not good for our country. Borka not good for our country. You, the only man who stand aside and say, yes, I, you're questionable, but you're not ready in the, in the free. But instead of standing up by yourself, you go join the people. Doubt. Dalton Thomas, you have no faith in your party that you can stand up and beat George Weir by yourself. So you go join a bunch of criminals, a bunch of people who be in Liberia politics for the time Hector was a pup, and you think you will win. Don't get confused, ANC. That's the way of life. <laughs> yeah. When you don't have 
vision for for anything. And I told you, all these guys, Prophet Key, he talked about taking over the military, and he ruling Liberia. Oh Lord. So everybody won't be leader of Liberia. And this is the problem with our country. This is the problem with our indigenous society. When the leadership of our country is no more sacrosanct. Every time they can have everything, they can come there and lead our country. And that's impossible. Leadership is too complex for any time they can have it with a proper education and experience to just jump in there and lead our country. Even for me, even for me, it's a challenge. But I've led people for so long. I led community of being free of, uh, of all the negativity that people do to each other. So I got more experience of what I'm getting into. And I'm not rushing into it. I'm not rushing into it. Because I know it's a lot of work too. If you want to make things happen, building our country is not an easy task. You gotta understand what you're doing. And if you really want to succeed at what you're doing, you need the help of God. You can't do it alone. The help of the Almighty God. If you don't have faith, you don't believe in all the things, you will never succeed. So ANC and Ellie Cummings, this is your first lesson into Liberian politics. You're being baptized. People are young kids. You people still think that everything is like in America. No, that's not American politics. And that was better than I showed you uh, with the CPP. <laughs> the honor cut Ellie Cummings, cut his legs from under him. So all you can talk, all your thing you want to talk. When you join criminals, and think you can lead them, you must suffer the consequences of your short-sightedness, your immaturity, and your visionless dreams. Now my last point. All these things I touch on, problems of our country. Right now we got no leaders. Who appointed the, the CPP? George Weah. You got two peas in the power that one ain't better than the other. The two just as bad as each other. See? The only difference is maybe on a CPP, I might take a chance to go home to leave. See? At least we know there will be a little diversity in our country. We hope. We hope. We hope there will be a little bit of diversity in our country. Under this country, giant government, and the, the proliferation of the tribal divide, of this Congo divide, country Congo divide, we ain't going nowhere. Then they're stealing the money, they're doing all of this to keep our people under their control so they can steal and mislead them. You know? But your eyes open it slowly, I see, thank God. Our young children need to see the light and know the Liberia for us. And we can't continue to let these few people divide our country and put us astray. Our country means more to us. All of us from that war, all of us die. Nobody stronger than the Congo people, nobody stronger than indigenous people, all of us fought that war together. So, in no point, we've got to prove to each other. Now we know we fought together, we glide together, we bled together. The time for us to stand up together is now. And we must stop the foolishness. Our country has a lot of work to do. Since the war ended, our country has not developed. Since the war ended, the stench and dirt remain in Monrovia. That's our capital city. That's the unifying point for all humans. We gotta clean up our city, that's the first thing. First of all, the bury that died in Brandy. Then we gotta resurrect, decent, honest.
to that resurrection. It'll be a profound resurrection. But what we hope will be. The time for the Liberian people is now, my children. We cannot persist on this path of dysfunctional living. We cannot persist on this path of corrupt, dysfunctional leaders who do mean nothing for us but only but to rob our country and enjoy their lives over the lives of the Liberian people. Make excuses that our country ain't got money for this, ain't got money for this. One day, ripping, eating, and stealing from our country making us suffer because the time of the Liberian people is now. Aluta continua. My lesson is concluded for the day. Have a good day, my people. We'll be here tomorrow. Thank you. Ah, let's end with some. Al-Hajj, Aziz, let the Hajj take us to the wall. Waters of rivers, the rivers of water, brother, brother, brother. Take us there, the Hajj. Take us there, brother. Take it home. We're gonna take it home. We're gonna take it home. I see you, folks. Ah, we're gonna have a sunshine face. Hey, who's going on? Sunshine face is alright. Out, out, out. Bye bye. Hello.